the BLM rioter, was killed over the weekend. How and why was he killed? Well, he showed up to one of these riots. They're still happening around the country where people are shutting down major intersections, mobbing up on cars, right, coming up and attacking people. And he shows up to one of these with an AK-47. Not even an AR-15. Some people don't know the difference between these things. The AR-15 is based off of Western rifles, and the AK-47 is based off of like Soviet rifles that you see more in the Middle East and in, in Russia. So he's got, that's the one with that kind of bendy magazine in it. So the, he shows up with this AK-47. Then a group of people, including him, mob a car and start attacking the car. And then some bullets ring out and it is being disputed who fired first and what exactly happened. Take a listen. You see people just totally taking over the street, walking everywhere. You can't really see quite where those bullets are coming from. Cameraman drops to the floor. Let's back up. You see some more. There's more exchange of fire. Where are we? Where are we? Is the, are we in Fallujah? Are we living in the Middle East or something? Why is this happening on our streets? Why, even before the bullets rang out, why are hordes of people allowed to shut down whole streets and intersections in the first place? Why is that being permitted? And what, what exactly happened here? Well, we can at least see from photographs that there's a mob of people that starts mobbing up on a car, starts banging on the car, starts attacking the car. And this guy, Garrett Foster, has the AK-47 and he's got it pointed at the car. Now it's being disputed. Was he pointing it at the driver in the car or just at the car? I think that's a little besides the point here. Then the driver in the car, I guess, had a gun on him as well. And the question is who fired first and who returned fire. The family of Garrett Foster are saying that he did not fire first at all. He, he, he did not discharge his weapon. Uh, there was a police press conference last night that said that the, according to the driver, the gunman, Garrett Foster, pointed the gun at him in his car. And so he discharged his gun, pulled away, and then another protester fired. Who really knows? Here, here's what I know. If a driver is in a car and he's got a gun because it's Texas, and he, you know, and if this, by the way, were earlier America, people would be armed much more regular than they are, than they are today. The left now wants to disarm everybody particularly the guns that Garrett Foster was using. But because the narrative is flipped now, because it's politically convenient for them to support this guy with the gun, all of a sudden they've dropped all of their gun control arguments. We know that there was a guy in a car with a gun. We know that there was a mob of anarchists that have been taking over our streets for the last many weeks. We know that one of these rioters had an AK-47 and it was not just strapped behind him or something like that. We've seen him holding the gun and it was pointed somewhere in the vicinity of this driver at the car, or maybe not quite at the driver, but somewhere there. If you are in that situation and you've got a mob attacking your car and one of those guys has an AK-47 and that AK-47 is pointed at your car, you are 1000% within your rights to defend yourself to defend your property for one, but also to defend yourself. Because guess what's going to happen if they get you out of that car? Nothing good. Nothing good is going to happen. Driver, from every piece of evidence that we have right now, completely justified. In fact, we even have the, the media gaslighting on this is so outrageous that they're trying to cover up these videos. We have video of the guy, of the, the demonstrator who was killed, discussing why he brought the AK-47 in graphic language. Oh, it's uh, AK-47. Uh, what you got it out tonight? They don't let us march in the streets anymore, so got to practice some some of our rights. Cool, man. Do you feel like you're, you'll need to use it? Nah, I think the, uh, I mean, if I use it against the cops, I'm dead. And I think all the people that hate us and, you know, want to say to us are 
take too big of a is to stop and actually do anything about it. So. Why'd you start carrying? Well, our roommate got arrested and they stopped letting us march anywhere, so started carrying. So he's got the gun strapped across his front, not across his back. He's got it strapped across his front. And he says, yeah, I've got this out here because I think the people that want to stop us from taking over the streets and bullying and intimidating them and, and disobeying the law, I think the people who want to stop us, they're too big wusses. I'll say wusses. He used a more colorful word. Wusses to actually do anything about it. So this is aggressive language. This is threatening language. And of course, he's got a mask over his face, ostensibly for COVID, although, you know, all, all of the Antifa guys have had masks over their face forever. And he's got the AK in front of him. It's not a good situation to be in. And by the way, the people who are encouraging these riots are in part culpable for this guy's death. He, look, he's, he, don't take your guns to town, son. Leave your guns at home, boy. Don't take your guns to town is uh, some age old advice in American life. But if you're going to go there and you're going to have it out and you're going to be in a provocative situation and you're going to be with, with a group that's attacking a car and you're going to maybe have it pointed at the car and then you're putting yourself in an impossible situation. That's not the, the narrative that the media are going to push to you. They're going to throw out everything they've ever believed about guns and police or, and, and protesting rather. But ima- just imagine for a second, I guess this is, this is how you can tell what the real story is. Imagine that that guy, Garrett Foster, were a member of the Tea Party. It's impossible to because the Tea Party was the best behaved political movement probably in the history of our country. But imagine that guy were in the Tea Party and you had a Tea Party guy show up with an AR-15 and he's out there and they're mobbing cars. And let's say it were cars of Democrats, you know, or people of color or women, I don't know, whatever, whatever, you know, identity group the the left is going to use. And then that person defended themselves. Do you really think the media would be, would be upset about that? No, they would be, they would be celebrating that someone defended themselves against these presumably racist, terrible, no good, awful. They're like Nazis in the streets. These protesters, that's what you would hear if it were the Tea Party. But because it's the left, they throw everything, everything out of the window. I hope you enjoyed that short segment from the Michael Knowles show. Be sure to check out the full episode linked in the description or download the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. 